absolutely right about this, that there has been an increasing attack on civilian areas, on residential blocks, on hospitals, like what happened in Mariupol three days back, on a theater. And these things are, there are in increased reports of these sorts. All of them cannot be verified, but certainly I'm here in Kyiv. I could verify two apartment blocks totally destroyed in a missile attack from Russian forces. Now there is a counterpoint from Russia. They say that a lot of these buildings, these theaters, these installations were housing either military personnel or militia personnel, or maybe housing some kind of military equipment like anti-aircraft guns or anti-aircraft missiles. I do not know which, which, which one to believe and which one not to believe. It's very difficult. And this, but that's why it's called fog of war. You cannot verify everything, really, this thing. But when it comes to international condemnation, see, in today's world, international condemnation means condemnation coming from America and its allies like Canada, Australia, and Western European countries. That is international condemnation whenever we use this word in today's scenario. That's Having said that, Nothing can justify the killing of innocent people and destruction of civilian infrastructure. Nothing whatsoever can justify that. Over to you. Absolutely. Nothing can justify that. What about the incident in Mariupol, uh, Rajesh? Were you able to confirm that the fact that a theater was attacked over there, which was in fact serving as the shelter for civilians, many of them women and infants? Very true. There were about 1,000 people in the theater. Uh, most of them were refugees from nearby villages, which, have been, which were forced to leave their villages, their houses, and were taking shelter in the theater, and they were like displaced people there. And there is an attack which has taken place. How much destruction had been? I could speak to someone who left Mariupol just two days back, and she told me on the phone that their city has been totally destroyed. I don't know if it was out of emotion or is it really true, but it appears that theater has been hit and there have been casualties there, exact number, none of the sites have confirmed so far. And it is, they reported that still a lot of people are still uh, stuck in the debris in that theater in Mariupol. Over to you. Right, Rajesh, you're also reporting about the fact that there has been a lull in the operation, the military operation, quote unquote, that Russia has been uh, conducting in Ukraine, especially in Kiev, where you are for the past 48 hours. What does that mean about Russia's plan of action? Look, there were reports by American uh, intelligence sources and also by Ukrainians that Russia, Russian forces are running short of ammunition now. And it appears that somehow those reports were true because nothing else justifies breaking this momentum of war at the moment when um, they were on the, on, the, on, the, on the entrance of Kyiv city and uh, they were just 10% of that airpin is left, and after that, nothing stopped them from entering uh, Kyiv city. So if they have not carried out any kind of air strikes on Kyiv in the last 48 hours, and if the fighting has reduced in the northwest in uh, Irpin, and there has been no fighting at all in now almost 72 hours in the northeast in Brovery, it, it somehow confirms the reports what Ukrainian army was saying all along in the last four days, that they are running short of ammunition and supplies, and they're using this period now to beef up their supplies and their stocks so that when they resume their operations, they can do it in a much better way. Over to you. Right. Rajesh, thank you so much for joining us with all of those details. Rajesh Pavar there reporting live from Battleground Ukraine. Now, Ukraine is alleging genocide after Mariupol theater sheltering hundreds of civilians was struck by Russia. The theater was being used as a bomb shelter. Residents are now fleeing with several corpses still being buried under the ruins. The Ukraine-Russia war enters day 23 with Kyiv reeling under Moscow shelling. Ukrainian cities continue to be under attack by the ruthless Russian troops. From Kyiv to Mariupol, Ukrainian cities are left bruised and battered. In Ukrainian capital Kyiv, a building was seen in raging fire. Plumes of smoke continue to emerge for hours. While in Kharkiv, one of the largest markets in Eastern Europe, Barabashovo was set ablaze. A kindergarten school too was left in ruins after an attack in Kharkiv. The Mariupol theater turned shelter that was bombed by the Russian army can be seen in ruins. In Kherson, citizens refused to accept handouts from the occupiers. And in Vyshgorod, Ukrainian flag was removed from the public administration building. The Russian strikes in Chernihiv claimed 53 lives. Devastating images came from Kyiv's Swiatoshinsky area where sharp flames can be seen ravaging the air. Mariupol, our Kharkiv, our Chernihiv, Kyiv's Oblast, Izum and all the other places of our heroes, which is very difficult, very difficult. We do everything and do everything. 
Абсолютно. Наша армія, поліція, ДСНС, гуманітарні конвої, церква, увесь наш народ. Ми вас не залишимо, а їм не пробачимо. Ви будете вільні. Точно, я знаю, як всі ми на нашій землі. Слава усім нашим героям. Слава Україні! Ukrainian President Zelensky is trying to keep up the motivation of his nation high for fighting the Russian troops. From meeting the injured civilians to soldiers to remaining defiant on his demands, Zelensky is doing all that he can. Here's more on that. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, the man of the hour, keeping the Ukrainian fighting spirit high, is motivating fellow citizens to protect the integrity of the country. The people's leader Zelensky on Thursday visited a family of injured civilians who suffered from shelling in Warsaw City. <laughs> the Ukrainian president also met personnel of state emergency service to thank them for their dedication. Ukrainian cities are reeling under the constant bombardment by Russian hellbirds. But people of the country have refused to bow down. As talks take place, Zelensky has made his demands clear. He wants the war to end with security guarantees and sovereignty. He wants to ensure Ukraine's territorial integrity with real protection of Kyiv. The results of the talks will depend on how much Ukraine and Russia are willing to yield. Bureau Report, India Today. Ukrainian refugees fleeing the Russian invasion arrived in Madrid with the help of a group of Spanish taxi drivers who volunteered for a 40-hour trip to Poland and back to support the mass evacuation. Here's the news report. A warm and emotional welcome in Madrid greeted Ukrainian refugees driven from Poland overnight on Thursday in a fleet of Spanish volunteer taxis. They arrived to a banner saying welcome in Ukrainian and people lining the streets. Some of the 133 refugees burst into tears. The drivers themselves organized their 40-hour round trip. They said the cost of around $55,000 was funded by themselves and donations. Jose Maria Perez drove his taxi for more than 3,100 miles to pick up the refugees. We spent the night in Warsaw, and the following night we began the most beautiful and hardest part, it was the hardest part because we heard very tough stories. I just had a sneak peek of the place in which they were staying. I didn't want to see it because I was shocked. It was really moving to see so many people trying to help and so many people in need of help. When we parked and we got the families assigned with their documents, just picture it, we were happy. Their initiative is just one of many springing up across Spain and Europe to help refugees from Ukraine. When they got to Nadarzin, near the Polish capital Warsaw, the drivers delivered donations they'd collected and prepared space to take refugees back to Madrid. The taxis pulled into San Anton Church in central Madrid shortly after 1 a.m. and were greeted by Father Angel, who heads an NGO, Messengers for Peace. Some 4,500 Ukrainian refugees have been registered in Spain since Russia's invasion of Ukraine on February 24th. But Spain's migration minister says the real number is much higher. 